I am Annie Fox, and this is the relaunch of Family Confidential, Secrets of Successful Parenting. My guest today is Sarah Newton. Sarah is one of my favorite parent educators from across the pond. Author, speaker, consultant, and media expert, Sarah's got 19 years experience working with gifted and talented young people who have the capacity to become high achievers. She has the amazing ability to raise expectations and aspirations of all the young people she comes into contact with. Sarah Newton has shared her wisdom with millions who have tuned into her radio and TV shows, have followed her writing, and have listened to her thought-provoking presentations. She is also the founder of Talented Teens, Teenage Dr. Love, and the editor and creator of Celebrity Parent Advice. Hello, Sarah. Welcome to Family Confidential. Hello, Annie. It's great to be here. (laughs) Thanks for taking your time to share some of your wisdom with us. And, you know, I wanted to get right into this because you intrigued me when you wrote in your email that you did not think that we were putting enough pressure on students in school. So, um, really, that's just about the polar opposite to everything we hear from people about our poor, stressed-out teens and how they need less pressure, not more. So, please tell me what you're talking about. (laughs) I spend an awful lot of time working with um, students and I hear the excuse over and over again that, oh, we're stressed, we're pressurized. And actually, I kind of don't believe it. I think that as the adults, we're telling them they're stressed. So they, they become stressed. And I think that we forget that actually stress and pressure is a good thing and it's what's needed to achieve in life. What we need to be saying is actually you need rest time. Because if you've got rest time, you can deal with as much pressure, you know, during the day. It's downtime they need. And so I do think that when we say they're under too much stress, they're under too much pressure, what we're doing is almost making excuses for them not to be great, you know, not to do really well. And I think that that can't be a good thing. Can't be, Annie. (laughs) Okay, so I hear what you're saying. So it sounds like when they've got a lot of time to to get their work done and to think about not doing it, (laughs) they fill up those spaces with that nail-biting sense of, oh my gosh, I have so much homework. I have so many tests to study for. And it sounds like you maybe are suggesting, and correct me if I'm wrong, that they spend less time doing that and maybe even schedule in some downtime some break time where they're not obsessing about the schoolwork? Is that accurate? Am I getting that right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you think of stress or pressure like an elastic band, and, you know, you can stretch it quite a lot. It will only break if it doesn't come back to its resting position, which I think is the same for students. And I think that because we as the adults are saying they're stressed and pressurized, they spend so much time worrying about being stressed and pressurized and not just getting on with the work. So, you know, the young people that I work with, quite often when they sit down to study, for example, the first 15 minutes, they're panicking. And it's not necessary. You know, it's not necessary to panic. You can all do it. We've all done it. You know, it's it's actually not difficult. It just requires a system. But I, I just think that... By saying this as adults, we're really setting them up to to fail and think that life isn't pressurized and isn't stressful. And actually, it is. You know, if you want to be a success, you've got to, you know, you've got to deal with the heat. I'm sorry. (laughs) No, it's a really well taken point. So why are parents, in in your perspective, why are parents feeding this unhealthy attitude and point of view to their kids when it's, it's really unproductive? Why do you think... I think that what happens a lot is that we, you know, the media noise and a lot of us just get on the bandwagon of what the media tell us, particularly in the UK. You know, the media says, oh, our kids are so stressed and parents panic without actually asking themselves the question. I also think that as a generation of parents, um, you know, my age of parents, that we were under 
over-parented. So we want to over-parent and we want to protect our children. We want to wrap them up and we want them not to fail and we want to make it safe and lovely. And um, we can't. <laughs> By doing that, we're failing them. I, I, I understand what you're saying by under-parenting and over-parenting. I'm probably a little bit older than you are in the generation of, of parents that I grew up with. My parents were not aware of my homework assignments. My parents didn't know when I was having a test. I felt like my job was to be a student and I did the work and I did well. So it was it was like they had their job and I had my job. So I understand what you mean by that. The overparenting. I just recently heard a term called snowplow parents. Oh, no, I don't know if you use the same term. You know what a snowplow is? You have that in the UK? Yeah, yeah. We, never, we hardly ever have them in the UK. Okay, but <laughs> okay, well, well, you know, we've had a lot of snow recently in the Midwest here in the States, and a snowplow essentially moves away all the obstacles in the path of a child. Uh, and as cool. a result, oh my goodness! Yeah, so the parents were rushing up ahead to clear the path in every way, and and you know, we could talk about resilience too, and the ability for the students to cope. I think what you've said is brilliant in terms of the first fifteen minutes of your session. The kids are freaking out because the snowplow is not there you're just saying do the work <laughs> exactly and it's just like just do the work you can do it stop panicking it's not stressful it's not pressure this is life if you want to if you want to be a success you've got to put in the perspiration and, th and this is what it takes and so you know i just don't buy the line that our kids are under so much more pressure because i think they they are in a different way than we were when we were children it is a different pressure but it's it's made up pressure <laughs> it's made so up you think it's kind of a mental mindset and it's not necessary so when you say to these students stop panicking i mean that's that's a direct command but do you tell them how to stop panicking <laughs> yeah. how do you do well that? i think that <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not underestimating the fact that grades are so much more important now than they ever have been, particularly in the UK. But I think that when we are panicking and worrying, we're, we're mixed up in our feelings. And getting mixed up in our feelings doesn't actually solve anything. Mm -hmm. So if someone is in a panic, I say, okay, what can you do first? What's the first thing you can do? Because if you can get someone into action, they'll stop panicking. Okay. You know, and, and I think that we we can't talk around the panic. We can't talk around the worry. I think we have to acknowledge it and go, OK, I understand that. What's the first thing you can do? OK, so I'm going to take the part of mom. I'm a mom. And yeah. there, there's my my daughter. And she's sitting down to study for her um, chemistry test, which is tomorrow. And she's flipping out. And I want to take Sarah Newton's advice and help my daughter <laughs> stop panicking. So instead of saying, stop panicking. <laughs> <laughs> which will probably only make, only make it worse, right? <laughs> um, what can I do? What I would do with a child in, in that instance, if they were panicking and it was the next day, is I would ask them to write a list of all the things they do know. Okay, what do you know in this subject? What do you know? Okay, and what are you a little unclear on? And what don't you know? Wow. Yeah, I want to stop you for a second because I was taking the point of view right then as the panicked child. And as you said, okay, just... Make a list of everything you do know in this subject. And I swear, Sarah, I just felt my heart just kind of get a little calmer. And I pictured myself writing down, okay, I do know the formula for um, sodium. I do know <laughs> hydrochloric acid. And then to then say, okay, what don't you know? And just to calmly, it's, it's like making yeah. a to-do list. This is what I know. Don't have to worry about this. This is what I'm not quite sure of. And this is what I'm sure I don't know. So I can direct yeah. my efforts. I love it. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. You know, I love lists. Lists are great. Lists <laughs> they stop <are> panic. <laughs> we should put that on the bottom here. <laughs> when I feel myself panicking and I've got so much to do and I think, hang on a minute, just make a list. Okay, so, you know, where am I going to start? And, and I think the, when the parent gets wrapped up in the panic, oh, no, no, you're panicking. Oh, no, it's really bad. Oh, no, you're too pressurized. You know, they're not helping. They're kind of adding to it. And it's like, okay, you know, what do you know? And suddenly, like you say, the child's calmed down. It's not, it's not rocket science. <laughs> but um, a lot of parents are stressed out about their students' achievement levels. Yeah. And so it's like they have to put their own oxygen mask on first, right? Mm, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. What advice do you have for parents? What kind of list should they make? <laughs> well, I, I, you know, I, that's not, I'm not beating around the bush. Bringing up a teenager is difficult. 
difficult, you know, it's challenging. And I think we have to make sure as a parent, we have our own time, you know, we do our own things, so we're not getting stressed. But I think what we have to remember when it comes to raising aspirations and schoolwork is ultimately, they're the one doing it. You know, we can't do it. We can give information, we can give support, but we can't beat them with a stick or a coward to make them do something they don't want to do. And it's not going to be the end of the world. If they don't get what they need to, they can always redo them. You know, it's, it's like we put so much pressure on ourselves as parents as this is it, it's do or die, and it's not true. It's absolutely not true. So I think sometimes we have to calm ourselves down as a, as a parent, and, you know, and even maybe ask ourselves, okay, where am I parenting really well? <laughs> do we to ourselves <laughs> i hear what you're saying and it's it's very wise and i also know that when we are in an emotional state we're not very rational yeah. and we cannot hear the wisdom of these words we're having a visceral emotional reaction to the fact that my kid got a very poor grade on her last chemistry test and here she is at the kitchen table trying to study and she's crying and i feel her anxiety <gasps> Help, yeah. Sarah. <laughs> I, th I think in that instance, you know, if it's got to the, that point, then you have to go and do something else together. Okay, let's go and get a Starbucks. Let's go for a walk. Let's get out of this situation because I don't think that you can rationalise with anyone that's very upset and very stressed or you can do it as a parent. So sometimes you've just got to get out of the out of the situation and, and just do something else. But I think that what we don't ask ourselves enough as parents so if a child's come home and they have a bad result we panic rather than saying okay what are our choices what are our choices here we've got choice a b c d e what are they which one do we want to you know go forward with right. and and we can only do that when we're not wrapped up in that whole drama of it being stressful it's so interesting to me i don't do drama very well <laughs> Well, it's not very helpful, and so it's a good thing that you don't do it unless you're on the stage, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, you know, my thought about the parents and, and the snowplow and the idea of being so so tied up with, with your expectations and your aspirations for your child. I mean, this is what parenting is about. We want the best for our kids. We want them to succeed. And, and you know, there's a group here in, in the U.S. Um, it's come out of Stanford. It's called, it has to do with success. And, and it's like redefining success. It's actually called challenge success. And the word success in their logo is turned upside down on its head. And I love that because so far we've had a very narrow definition of what student success looks like. It means all A's. It means getting top grades all the time. And unfortunately, it, it often means that you, you spend all your time studying or thinking about studying. And I'm wondering, what is your definition of student success? Oh, well, my definition of student success would be that the child achieves at least what they are capable of achieving if not more than what they're capable of achieving. But let's not forget that actually being a student is about learning about life. It's about learning about relationships. It's about having fun. It's about, you know, being a teenager. It's not just, it's not about every waking minute concentrating on those grades. But I'm a big believer that actually when schools set targets, they set them and the child can achieve them and that we shouldn't give them excuses not to achieve them, which I do see a lot happening in this country. So I think that it's achieving your potential, because there's lots of research that shows in this country that um, what you achieve at school, which we call GCSE results, if you pass them, then you'll go on to have, you know, a better life, in inverted commas. But if you fail them, that these students then feel that they're not very good at anything mm -hmm. and that they don't try harder. So there's a lot of correlation between doing well at school and aspirations for life. You know, so quite often people say exam results aren't important. Well, actually they are because the results show us that a child who reaches their potential at school um, is more likely to reach their potential in life. A child that doesn't reach their potential at school is less likely to reach their potential in life. And, and that's un undisputable. So, you know, I think that reaching their potential in all sorts of ways is, is what student success is. Yeah, I mean, that, I love your answer. And it's just very well-rounded as we all are as people. And yet there's mm -hmm. that piece that you need to get the grades to pass 
those exams and um, how that can take over all the other pieces of life that we're saying it's important to achieve in them, the social part of it, the, the you know, yeah. having time to do what you'd love to do outside of school. So, you know, is this not a mixed message in a way when you're saying, yeah, you know, let's let's talk about the whole child and let's let's really stretch and expand our definition of what success means. Um, and yet, you know, kids, you still really need to pass those exams. So is it a mixed message? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think so. I'm not saying you need to pass. I say you need to reach your potential at school. And I think that if we fail a child to reach their potential at school, then that can't be a great thing because it has a huge impact on self-esteem for ex for example for a start so i think that it's about reaching your potential at school in your grades but reaching your potential in your relationships reaching your potential you know in your friendships reaching your potential in out outside school activities you know and, and anything else so i think it's about reaching potential not about passing or getting an a if you are capable of getting an a yes you should absolutely reach for one um but if your if your potential is a C grade in the UK, then that's that's great too. But if they don't reach their potential, that to me is just wasted, you know, and really sad. <laughs> Got it. So let's talk about the parents' role in terms of um, finding out what your child's potential is. So you know when to back mm. off and when to give a little nudge of encouragement. Um, I don't know what it's like in the US, but I know in the UK that schools set what they call target grades. And a target grade is a grade that that child is capable of reaching, but it is a little bit of a stretch. And I think that if a parent really wants to know what their child is capable of, then they need to be talking to the school, talking to the teachers and saying, what is my child's target grade? Or what is my child's aspirational grade, which sometimes they're called, um, because that's the that's the sort of the, the the benchmark. You know, the teachers are saying this child is capable of this. But what me and you both know, Annie, <laughs> is that a child may be capable of that, but if they haven't got the grit that's needed to carry that out they're not going to reach their potential so I think that as parents we have to look at that target grade but also understand our child you know understand their, their motivation and their determination have they got enough of that to reach for an A or would a B be a better target for them mm -hmm. okay I like this I've not heard this this term uh, target grade or potential grade I think it's it's really good for parents to know that so for all my listeners in in the US who are who are thinking about this if you're not sure what your child's potential is have that talk with the child's teacher yeah. and find out what is my child's potential as far as you can see and that way I can help him or her move towards it, stretch a little bit, but not break and bending over so yeah. far because you need to know what, what the goal is and what is realistic. So um, um, before we close here, I want, I know that homework is a big deal here and not in a good way. <laughs> <laughs> there have been books written about the homework wars, and there are actually proponents, educational proponents, who say, you know, there shouldn't be any homework because the work that you do in school ought to be sufficient and kids need downtime. So mm. as the homework wars ebb and flow in every individual home of my listeners, I'm wondering if you can give just like three concrete tips of how parents can make it less of a war zone tonight at home with homework. I think that when a child gets to probably about 14, maybe 13. Which is eighth grade. Yeah, so eighth grade. The parent needs to hand responsibility over to the child. Okay, you are responsible for your homework. Um, what do you need from me to, you know, to make sure that works okay? And let the child try and figure it out for a few months and see what happens. Because I think that if we step in too much and plan for them, they're not learning anything. I don't think homework should ever become a, a battle at all. And I think that every child will do their homework differently. And I think what happens is quite often parents dictate how and when it should be done. And I think it's about conversations between you and your child, you know, each week going, okay, how did homework go? Um, when did you do it? Did you get it all in? Did it work? How are we going to manage it next time? 
and what do you need from me and I and I don't think there is any hard and fast rule because each child will be different I think conversations about homework every week are probably you know a really good idea until the child's got it managed and dialed and know that they will fail probably at some point and it's not the end of the world but we should just be helping them create the system that works for them not be the system oh I like that I like that a lot. Mm. And and I think that kind of leading up to that 13-year-old 8th grade student, maybe little by little each year, a parent steps back so mm. that in terms of their homework yeah. responsibility so that the, the student can step up. Would you agree? Yeah, abs- absolutely. And when I handed um, it over to my children, I was like, I'm handing this over to you. I'm expecting you to be responsible for it. If it's late, if it's not in, I won't write you a note. I won't make any excuse for you. You have to deal with the consequence. Okay. This is your responsibility. And I think that quite often parents will step back and then when it's not go- doesn't go right, they'll write a letter or they'll ring up the school or they'll apologise for their kids or make an excuse no that's not good (laughs) you know the child needs to learn you know with with that and I think that if we're handing it over we hand it over but it's a it's a conversation that continues very good I'm so pleased to hear all of this these are great reminders for parents Sarah thanks a lot thanks a lot for taking the time to talk to us and um, keep up the good work oh thank you my pleasure I'm Annie Fox for Family Confidential, Secrets of Successful Parenting. To learn more about my work with parents and teens, visit me at AnnieFox.com. And tune in next week for our next podcast for Family Confidential. And until then, happy parenting!